The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Fugitive's Trail. It is approximately 11.30 on the night of January 21st, 1948. Mr. and Mrs. Ben Purvis are driving back to their ranch on the outskirts of Newby, Texas. The car, a small black sedan, finally swings off the main highway, turns into a long, narrow dirt road leading to the ranch buildings. Hmm, looks like we got company, Ben. There's a car parked in front of the house. Yeah, probably one of Arlene's boyfriends. Mm Mm-hmm. Look, I thought you told her we didn't like your fellas hanging around. Oh, now, Ben, he probably just stopped by to pick her up and take her home. We told her we'd be back about this time. Well, just the same. Now, don't but... crap about Arlene. You know, babysitters are hard enough to get out here without... Well, I still think you could find somebody else. I was never sold on that girl. She's kind of wild and unpredictable. Oh. Never know what she's going to do. She's all right, Ben. Just stop worrying. Looks like Dave Fenton's car. Yeah, that is his car. Hey, you sit still, Ben. I'll open the garage doors. Thought he and Arlene split up. So did I. Must have patched things up, I guess. You got the plants Mrs. Sutton gave you? Uh-huh, right here. What sort of flower is he gonna be? Yellow. Miss Sutton told me the name, but I forgot. They can look real nice alongside the house, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. You know, Ben, I'm kind of glad we went over to see Miss Sutton tonight. Yeah, she's a real nice old lady. Mm -hmm. Sure held up fine at the funeral this afternoon. It's going to be hard on her for a while, though, poor thing. After all, she and Mr. Sutton were married almost 40 years. Now he's gone. Yeah. Well, Doc warned him to slow down after that last attack he had. But no, he wouldn't hear of it. Oh, it sounds like our young un's acting up. Well, you shouldn't be crying now if Arlene gave him his 10 o'clock bottle. He'd just like her to forget. Arlene, what? Ben, she's not here. That's funny. Arlene! Probably in with the baby, Les. Hey, what's this? What's the matter? Look, chairs turned over and... What? Look, my good table lamp on the floor. Oh, Ben, look, it's broken. Hey, what the heck's been going on around here? Arlene? Here, honey, you take the lamp. I'm going in to see the baby. Arlene! There is that fool girl anyway. Baby all right, Helen? Uh Uh-huh, his blanket was on the floor. He's just cold, that's all. See if Arlene's in the kitchen, will you, Ben? All right. Uh, I'll be darned. Honey... Come here, Matt, will you? Is Arlene in here, Ben? No. Look at this. What? Baby's bottle, full. And here's a warming pan. She didn't give him his feeding. Oh, I wonder where she is. I'm going to have a look out back. Don't go on, kid. Careful on the porch, dear. Better turn on the light. Okay. <gasps> Good Lord. Ben? Ben? Ben, what's the matter? What... Who is it? Young Dave Fenton. He's dead. (laughs) 
On discovering the body of Dave Fenton, Ben Purvis immediately called the sheriff's office. The sheriff put out an all-points bulletin for the Rankin girl and requested aid from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned, arriving at the Purvis Ranch shortly after 4 a.m. There's the body, Jace. Blast caught him right behind the ear. Not very pretty, is it? Shotgun wounds never are. When this happened? Doc figures sometime between 9 and 10 o'clock last night. Uh-huh. Just a kid. 19. Worked at his pa's gas station in town. Seemed like a real nice boy, Jace. Real nice. Anybody touch this shotgun? No. Who's it belong to? Ben Purvis. Says he generally keeps it behind the kitchen door. It's babysitter Arlene... Uh... Arlene Rankin. Here's a description of her. I sent a man over to her house right after Purvis called me. Her pa said she hadn't come home. The man's still out there keeping an eye on the place in case she does show up. I don't think she will. Which one's Purvis? Over there by the fence, talking to the justice of the peace. Ben! Oh, Ben! Okay, Chef, be right with you. If you want to talk to Mrs. Purvis, Jay, she's inside. Later, maybe. You want me, Sheriff? Yeah. Uh, ben, this here is Ranger Pearson. Jace, Ben Purvis. Howdy, Ranger. Howdy, Mr. Purvis. Sheriff tells me that you and your wife were out visiting when this happened. That's right. We were over at the Sutton place. What time did you leave the house here last night? Well, now, let me see. I drove over to Arlene's house around 6.30. I picked her up and brought her back here. Then the wife and I left. I guess that was around 7. You know if she was expecting this Fenton boy to drop in on her? Uh, no, no, I don't. Had he ever come around here before? Oh, sure, lots of times. He dropped by to take her home. Only he stopped coming around a couple of months ago. Why was that? Well, near as I can figure, she and Fenton must have had a falling out of some sort. Maybe she got tired of them. She had a lot of boyfriends, new ones, every time you turn around. I see. Who's the latest, do you know? No, it's pretty hard to keep up with her. A couple of weeks or so ago, it was Lenny Hayes. Well, was he supposed to come by last night? I wouldn't know that, Ranger. Well, you usually take her home? That's right, whenever there's no fella here to pick her up. You know, Jace... I figure that Fenton here got sore because she threw him over. They had a fight. She killed him and beat it. Yeah, it could have happened that way. And it could have been the reason why she didn't take Fenton's car. She'd been spotted too easy. That girl. Ain't surprised she'd pull a stunt like this at all. Not this gun of yours, Mr. Purvis. You always keep it loaded? Uh, yes, sir. And it's usually sitting behind the kitchen door. Hmm. Did Arlene know it was there? I don't see how she could have missed noticing it, Ranger. I want to take this gun with me, Mr. Purvis. Have the lab men check the fingerprints. Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead. All right, Sheriff. I guess the J.P. can take charge of the body now. Let's get moving. Anybody in mind you want to see? Yeah. Some of Arlene's friends. We'll start with the boy she's been going with lately. This Lenny Hayes. He lives over the drugstore. Oh, but let's see. It's, it's after five now, Jace. He's probably on his way to work. Well, where's that? Auction barn. He's sort of a general handyman there. Tagging cattle. Herding him around the place. All right. Let's look him up. The gray of dawn was creeping over the horizon as we reached the auction barn. The sheriff and I mounted the stairs to the platform overlooking the pens below. You see Lenny Hayes anywhere, Sheriff? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there he is down there, coming along the runway. Lenny? Oh, Lenny? Yeah? Want to talk to you? Come on, Jace. Morning, Sheriff. Morning, Lenny. I figured you'd be coming around. Oh, you heard what's happened. Yeah. This is Ranger Jace Pearson, Lenny. He wants to ask you some questions. Sure. When did you see Arlene Rankin last, Lenny? Yesterday afternoon at the Sutton funeral. Everybody in town was there, I guess. You talked to her? For a few minutes. I asked her to go to the basketball game at the school gym, but she couldn't. She'd already promised to sit for the Purvis folks. I see. What happened between Arlene and Dave Fenton, do you know? They just busted up, that's all. How'd he take it? Well, he could be pretty nasty when things didn't go the way he wanted. He called her up a lot after that, wanted to patch things up, but Arlene wouldn't have any of it. He got good and sore a couple of times. Do you think Arlene was frightened by him? Well, sure, the guy was crazy jealous and never knew what he might do. I see. Do uh, you have any idea where Arlene could be right now? Nope. Uh, no idea at all. All right, thanks. Uh, could I ask you something, Ranger? Yeah? Look, uh, 
If Arlene did kill Fenton, it, it could have been self-defense, couldn't it? Maybe. Suppose he come out there looking for trouble. Couldn't she have picked up the gun to scare him away, not meaning to pull the trigger? And the gun went off accidentally. Is that what you're driving at, Lenny? Sure, why not? Well, in that case, she shouldn't have run away. Well, yeah, that was a crazy thing to do, I guess. But look, uh, if she was to give herself up now, and if she could prove it was self-defense, an accident... Go on. Well, I mean, uh, things would go easier on her, wouldn't they? Has Eileen been in touch with you, Lenny? Has she? Listen, Ranger, I, I, I don't want to get in any trouble, but... You won't if you tell the truth. Well, this thing is getting me down. I, I want to get it off my mind. If I told you where she is, would you give her a break? I'm not a judge. Where is she? She phoned me last night from Covington, from the bus depot. Covington, huh? Yeah, she said she was in trouble. Wouldn't tell me what it was. She said she needed money, and... Well, I didn't have any. Not even enough to buy gas to drive over there. What'd you tell her? I told her I'd see if I could raise some, but... Well, she hung up on me. What time did she make this phone call? Around midnight, a few minutes before. I remember because I was listening to the radio and the station signed off while I was talking to her. There's a bus comes through here around 10.30, and it pulls into Covington a little before midnight, Jace. That's the one she probably took. Come on, Sheriff. Let's head for Covington. We spent the major part of the day combing the town of Covington. But there wasn't a single trace of Arlene Rankin. Late that afternoon, the sheriff and I wound up at the bus depot. Got to talking to the woman behind the lunch counter. Well, let me see now. Girl about so high and blonde hair. Coming on the late bus, you say? Uh-huh. Mm, let me see. Youngster, was she? Seventeen. Say, that wouldn't be the ranking girl, Ranger. That's right. Heard about her on the radio this morning. Say, you mean she's here in Covington? We believe she was here last night. Land sakes, imagine that. Well, have you seen a girl answering her description, ma'am? Well, no. I... Wait a minute. Say, there was a girl, just like your description. You sure, ma'am? Mm-hmm. Last night, by closing time. I was throwing out the coffee when she come up and asked me for a glass of water. Girl, Bob, so I, real attractive. She act nervous or upset? She sure did. Oh, and say, she asked me where the Lowry place was at. That's Ned Lowry, owns a hardware store. Ned Lowry. Mm, that's right. Him and his wife live down the street, three blocks. Big White House on the corner. Want me to show you? No, thanks. We'll find it, ma'am. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be anybody at home, Jay. I'm pretty sure there is, Sheriff. I heard someone moving inside. Hey, you're right, Jace. There is somebody in there. I just saw the window curtains move. Reckon I ought to slip around back. Hold it. Yes? Oh, Ranger. What is it? Afternoon, miss. We begin to think there wasn't anyone at home. Well, sorry if I kept you. I was taking a nap. I wasn't sure if I heard someone at the door or not. We're looking for a girl named Arlene Rankin. Arlene Rankin? Mm. Well, there's no one here by that name. Is that so? Uh, this is a Lowry resident. We know that, miss. Well, there are only three of us living here. My sister, and her husband, and myself. You don't know Arlene Rankin? No. Should I? Here's her picture, miss. Ever see her before? Let's see. No. No, I never saw her before. Your sister and her husband at home? No, I'm alone. Mind if we come in? Well, no, but... We just want to look around. Sounds like it's in this room, Jace. There's no one in there. It's just... We'll have a look anyway, miss. Huh. Window shutter, Jace. Wind's banging it against the house. It's broken. Kept me awake half the night. Look, if you tell me what this is all about... That suitcase over there on the chair, miss. Who does it belong to? Well, that's mine. Yours, then. Baggage tag here says Continental Trailways, Jace. That's how I got here, by bus. What's that, miss? I arrived last night, just here visiting my sister. What time did your bus get in last night? Oh, it was around midnight. You talked to anyone at the depot? No, I don't think I did. Are you sure? Oh, wait, I did ask the woman at the lunch counter how to get here. I see. That lady back at the lunch counter sure has an imagination, Jace. Tell me, miss, did any other girl get off the bus when you did last night? No other girl. You positive? Yes, I think so. What do you make of that, Jace? Take a look at this photograph again, miss. You recall seeing this girl among the passengers? Well? 
No, I don't remember, Stina. Of course, the bus was crowded, and I really didn't pay much attention to the others on board. I see. Look, would you mind telling me what this is all about? No cause for you to worry, miss. Sorry we bothered you. Come on, Sheriff. There was no reason to doubt the word of the girl at the Lowry house. Arlene Rankin hadn't gotten off the bus at Covington the night before. The sheriff and I drove back to his office in Newby, and we had another talk with Lenny Hayes. But it's the truth, I tell you. Arlene did call me. She's not in Covington, Lenny. We're pretty sure of that. Well, maybe she went on. Don't see how she could have done that. All roads been blocked. You've been lying, haven't you, Lenny? No, no. You could have made up that story about the phone call from Covington just to throw us off the trail. No, I didn't. you got to believe me. We're willing to lay odds you never received a phone call, Lenny, that Arlene wasn't even on that bus last night. She must have been. I'll get it, Jake. Sheriff's office. Yep, just a minute. Company B in Dallas calling you, Jace. Thanks, Sheriff. Hello. Yeah? You know, Lenny, you can save us a lot of trouble. What's that? What do you mean? Stop trying to cover up for Arlene. I'm not... You're trying to protect her by sending us on a wild goose chase. That's not true. Now, listen, Lenny, there's no sense in you... Hold it, Sheriff. Hmm? Looks like maybe we owe Lenny here an apology. Oh? That bus we figured Arlene wasn't on was being vacuumed in Dallas this afternoon, and a purse was found behind one of the seat cushions. A purse? What about it? Belonged to Arlene Rankin. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Now... We continue with tonight's case, Fugitive's Trail, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. Finding Arlene Rankin's purse on that bus indicated we'd been wrong about Lenny Hayes. Yet the girl we'd talked to in Covington had been positive that Arlene hadn't gotten off the bus there the night before. I put in a call to the Continental Trailways Company and found out that the driver of the bus was due back in Newby in an hour. We were waiting at the bus station when he came in. Nope, I don't think I can help you, Ranger. You know what the Rankin girl looks like? Yeah. Saw a picture of her in the Dallas paper this afternoon. And you don't remember seeing her get off the bus anywhere along the line? Nope. Do you remember seeing her get on the bus here in Newby? <laughs> Look, I picked up quite a load here last night. A lot of high school kids, Ranger. Maybe this Rankin guy was one of them. Maybe she wasn't. Didn't pay much attention. I just wanted to get rolling. You're in a hurry, were you? I was running behind schedule. See, ordinarily there's a five-minute wait here. One cup of coffee. Well, I had two. Oh. Basketball game, the high school gym went over time, and, well, I didn't want to shove off. I knew most of the kids were counting on getting a bus. Wait a minute. You were late taking off? Oh, sure. Almost ten minutes. What time did you arrive at Covington? Well, with all those stops along the way, I, I lost another five minutes. Didn't pull into Covington until 12.15. 12.15? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Sheriff, yeah. All right, driver, thanks. Sure enough. Sorry I wasn't much help, Ranger. See you, Sheriff. Yeah. Kind of interesting, isn't it, Jace? If the bus didn't get to Covington until 12.15, how could Arlene have called Lenny from the bus depot there a few minutes before 12? Doesn't seem to add up, does it, Sheriff? Of course, Lenny might have got the time mixed up. I don't think so. He seemed pretty sure of it, you call. Yeah, that's right. He must have lied. We'll know about that for sure once we talk to the telephone company over at Covington. Back at the sheriff's office, I called the Covington phone company and asked them to check a call from the Covington bus station to Lenny's number in Newby. There was no record of any such call. The sheriff sent one of his deputies out to bring Lenny in, and we waited. Well, and it's just like we figured, Jason. The girl wasn't on the bus at all. Only how do you account for the purse? It was found on the bus. A plant, Sheriff. Then he could have slipped aboard the bus last night, put it in there while the driver was in the cafe having coffee. Yeah. Yeah, he could have done that. Be mighty careless of a girl to forget her purse when she's trying to make a getaway, don't you think? A little too careless. I won't say that thought hasn't crossed my mind, Jace. And you know, Sheriff, something else bothers me. It seems like Lenny went to an awful lot of trouble trying to cover up for the girl. Well, any kid who's as crazy about a girl as he is by now. I know, but if he was really trying to shield her, he'd have done a lot better by keeping his mouth shut. He's been real cooperative. 
He's been working at it a little too hard. What are you driving at, Jason? It's just a hunch, Sheriff. But if I can force Lenny into making a move, it might be in the wrong direction for him, but in the right direction for us. I... Yeah, hold it, Jason. Hello? Well, come on in, Lenny. Thanks, Charlie. Any news of Arlene? Not a sign of her yet. Well, Dallas is a pretty big place. The fact that her purse was found on the bus in Dallas doesn't necessarily mean she's there. She could have gotten off the bus anywhere along the line. Yeah, I guess so. Lenny, about this phone call you said you got. Still don't believe me, huh? Maybe you were mistaken. Maybe Arlene just told you she was calling from Covington. No, no, I heard the operator. She said it was Covington. I see. Well, we'll check with the phone company anyway just to make sure. Check but... with the phone company? But Arlene called me from a pay phone. How can you check? Well, it doesn't make any difference. The phone company keeps a record of all long-distance calls. Didn't you know that? No. No, I didn't. Well, anyway, that isn't why I asked you to drop in, Lenny. We think you can help us. Mm-hmm. So what? We'd like you to talk to some of Arlene's friends. Maybe you can find out more than we have. Me? If you want to help us, don't you? You'd be helping Arlene. Well, sure, sure I want to help. Well, then get to her friends. Tell them if they know something, they better talk up. and get in a lot of trouble by withholding information. Yeah, I guess they can. Okay, that's all, Lenny. Let us know if you hear anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you know, Ranger. <laughs> The sheriff and I waited a few moments after Lenny had left the office, and then we eased out into the street. We saw him get into his car halfway down the block and take off. In the darkness, we watched the taillight disappear toward the edge of town. We followed him. What's he up to, Jace? I don't know. That's the second time he's driven around the cemetery. Arlene wouldn't be hiding in there, would she? Look, he's turning onto the other highway now, heading south. Good. Maybe we can get a little closer, Jace. Lots more traffic on that road. He's speeding up. Suits me fine. At least we'll get to wherever we're going that much sooner. A quarter of an hour later, Lenny Hayes turned off the main highway into a narrow dirt road. I switched off my headlights and followed. We spent another 15 minutes trailing him as he cruised up and down the back roads like he was searching for something. And we wound up on the highway once more. When we reached the outskirts of Newby, he turned again drove right into the cemetery and stopped. Any sign of him, Jake? There's his car parked up ahead. Easy, easy now. Better stay here in the shadows. He might spot us in this moonlight. I'd sure like to know what the Samuel that kid's up to. Hold it. Yeah. There he is. Where, Jake? Over there, near the fence. What's he doing? It's digging. Say, wait a minute. Look at the flowers over there, Jace. Pushed over to one side. That's Harry Sutton's grave. What's he doing digging around there? Freshly turned ground, Sheriff. If he's trying to hide something, he can do it quickly. Let's move up a little closer. Yeah. Here. This way around the hedge. Yeah. We'll move up behind his car. Stay down, Sheriff. What's he doing? Stop digging. He's coming this way, to the car. Now what? He just opened the trunk compartment. Let me take a look. Yeah. Now he's pulling something out of the trunk. It looks like... Even at this distance, there's no mistaking what he's dragging out of there. A body. I guess we can get him now, Sheriff. All right, Lenny. Stop where you are. Don't move. Huh? He's making a break for it, Jace. Let's go. This way, Jace. He's heading around back of the chapel. Hold it. Hold it, Sheriff. Where the blazes did he go? I don't know. Listen. Listen, do you hear anything? Nope. Hey, wait a minute. I thought I saw something move over there behind that tombstone. Let's take a look. Wait. You circle around that way. If he is there... Let's see if we can maneuver him in position so he'll make a break for his car. I'll be waiting for him. All right. Careful, though. He may have a gun. All right. There he goes, Chase! Hold it, Lenny. Let, let 
I go. Go. Simmer down now, boy. This is as far as you go. I go. I said simmer down. Uh, uh, Okay, Reg. You all right, Jase? Yeah. Come on, let's go around back to the car and have a look at that body. Well, it's Arlene Rankin, all right, Jase. How about it, Lenny? You feel like talking? <laughs> sure. Why not? Arlene, she was just playing me for a sucker. She was really crazy about Fenton all the time, just using me to make him jealous. When did you find that out? <laughs> Last night when I, I sneaked over to the Purvis place, I saw them together. I went out of my head, I guess. So you went inside, got the gun, and shot Fenton. Well, I didn't mean to do it. I just wanted to scare him. I didn't mean to. I suppose you didn't mean to kill Arlene, either. No, but I had to. I had to kill her to keep her from talking. You had the body in the trunk compartment here all this time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I waited too long last night trying to make up my mind what to do with it. Sheriff's men were all over the place looking for her. You thought you'd get away with making it look like Arlene had killed Fenton and run off. Huh? I almost did get away with it. Yeah, almost. The penitentiary's full of people who almost got away with it, too. Come on, let's go. For the brutal murders of Dave Fenton and Arlene Rankin, Lenny Hayes was sentenced to Huntsville Penitentiary for the rest of his life. And now, here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. One day last year, we received a card from a little girl who wanted to be a Texas Ranger. She said she didn't have a horse, but she did have a mule and could ride. We learned last week that this same little girl was stricken with a serious illness and has been in bed all summer. When she heard our first show a few weeks ago, she asked her father to help her write a poem and send it to us. We'd like to read it. R is for ranger, stalwart and strong. A for his aim that never goes wrong. N for his nerve, calm, steady, and sharp. G for his gun, never misses the mark. E is for effort, endurance, and fight. And R for respect for the things that are right. Fanalu, that's a fine poem, and it's deeply appreciated. Honey, you're going to get well, because in spirit, you're a Texas Ranger. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of... The Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Lillian Bayef, Whitfield Connor, Parley Bear, Sam Edwards, and Marion Richmond. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Adrian Jendo. And the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Sunday is your invitation to find radio entertainment with the big show, Phil Harris and Alice Fay, and Theater Guild on the air. Yes, hear all three on NBC. Next, it's The Big Show on NBC.